think the same goes uh, you know, for Facebook. It's just it's hard to, to be a master of, of many things. Um, gotcha. and, and so it comes up when, when you're using the product, you know, you try a certain search, especially in the long tail, you're going to get weird results, and it's that tuning and perfection and honing that you get out of, you know, just focusing on one thing and doing it well. Do you think there's like a difference uh, in terms of quality of your data versus theirs as well? Uh, I, I think without question, uh, we have far deeper content than anybody else out there when it comes to local. Um, you know, it's north of 39 million reviews at this point. You know, we're, we're kind of known for, for better or for worse, really long, uh, detailed reviews. Uh, we kind of own it and we love it. Um, you, know, you, you do get the occasional story. Uh, when you're reading that restaurant review that goes into details about a relationship that they had with a breakup that was happening that night. But we think that's part of the fun and, and interesting uh, texture uh, of a Yelp review and really quality content is understanding that someone really lived this experience. You know, what was it that, that really stuck out for them that, that they wanted to share with the world? Uh, and that's something that you just don't get on you know, the other, what, what we call drive-by review sites, where it's kind of like a text box and like no personality. And as a result, it's kind of like, eh, I loved it, I hate it, you know, the YouTube uh, comment version of reviewing. Gotcha. Uh, you guys also just launched a feature um, called Call to Action, um, kind of giving, uh, I don't know, giving the retailers more, more features that people could do through Yelp. Um, yeah, how has that been going, and how are you guys looking to expand on what people can do directly with retailers through Yelp. Yeah, I mean that was a, a very exciting launch. We got heard a lot uh, from our advertisers. There's a lot of interest in Buzz. It's basically a feature where you can put something on your page to try and drive the, the consumers that are checking out your page to, to take some sort of an action. So you know, go go check out this coupon or you know make a reservation through the site. Uh, and so it was a relatively simple first step in trying to close the loop uh, with local businesses uh, on Yelp. And, and actually today we've launched a, a second step, um, which is a bit more involved, which we call Yelp Platform. Okay. Um, so this is the official announcement, ta-da. <laughs> and uh, you know, the first foray is actually in a, in a specific vertical uh, with um, E24 and delivery.com, you'll be able to do food delivery now. Uh, we're starting with uh, about 100 businesses, it's live right now. Uh, over the next week or so, we'll, we'll dial that up and within a couple weeks it'll be you know, many thousands of businesses that you can order food delivery on. And so with the Yelp platform, it's actually quite open. Like we're, we're planning to bring in lots of different partners in, in verticals. And it's not meant to be us kind of picking winners. Uh, we want you know, multiple, uh, any, anyone that's really best in class to be able to plug in. And, and so they're able to build into the platform, bring some of their experience right onto Yelp. Um, and the actual transaction happens on Yelp. So in the food delivery case, you go build out your, you know, build out your order, and then check out. You're checking out on Yelp. So your credit card is stored with us, and it's quite safe. Um, and then, you know, the food comes. And, and as you go into these different verticals, you'll actually be able to have this shopping experience, which I think uh, will, will be pretty interesting. It's, you know, as I think about it, the, the grand vision is something like, you know, you have an Amazon one click for online shopping, but you don't really have a one click equivalent in local. And so, if you had this place that you could always go into and transact, you know, make a reservation, get, get whatever it is you need actually done and booked. I think that's very powerful. And so that was the idea behind what, what we built. Nice. So it also sounds like it's a really interesting way for you guys to get you know, more payment information from people now, too. I know you have Yelp deals, but uh, was that part of the plan, or are, you just, or are you just trying to expand the scope of Yelp? It wasn't specifically about the, the payment piece. What we were trying to do there is just make it really convenient. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you think about, the fact that you can buy just about anything uh, online at, at Amazon, you know, from lots of different vendors, we like that idea. Of, you know, by saving payment information, it just reduces friction. It makes it easier to transact. It makes it, uh, you know, a better experience to come back to Yelp uh, again and again uh, for you to, to transact. And so, felt like that that was a thing we had to do. Gotcha. It also seems like this is a great way for you to sort of expand yourself beyond restaurant reviews, which I know you guys have kind of been known for. Um, Rocky Agrawal, who I think is here, our contributor, uh, back when you guys uh, you know, went public, he kind of pushed a big question. like, what will Yelp do to show that it's more than a review site, a restaurant review site? This seems like a step. Well, obviously, we're doing food delivery yeah. at day yeah. once. There is a lot of traffic there. But yeah, I mean, we've always been uh, far you know, far greater than, than just uh, restaurant reviews. Usually the reason why we have that reputation is predominantly because when we first come into a market, that's kind of a vertical that gets to critical mass from a review standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
But over time, as you bring in more and more users, you start, you know, not everyone has several dentists to review, but they have one. And so you have to have a certain number of users before you have enough reviews in that category for it to be interesting. Um, but now that we've been operating for, you know, north of nine years, um, actually this week or something, yeah, well, actually this week, nine years, thanks. Um, we, we have built up a lot of content in these other verticals. And so, you know, a really popular uh, category for us is actually shopping, so all of retail. Uh, you know, nightlife is, of course, interesting. Beauty, uh, like spas and nail salons and so forth, is really big for us. And, and it goes on into the long tail. I mean, it's essentially all of the yellow pages as well as kind of city guide uh, verticals. Gotcha. Um, I also think of Angie's List, which was doing very similar things, but they have a premium model. They also went, uh, they went public around the time that you guys did. Uh, are you doing anything? I mean, I mean, is this feature kind of a way to encourage people to look at you differently than Angie's List, or are you doing anything specifically to sort of tackle what they've, they've become known for? Not really. We don't really seem to run into them that much. I mean, okay. we have a very different product. Uh, you know, I think Angie's List has more, uh, you know, it's more analogous to it's like, uh, where they're charging for content, there's a paywall, and so that severely restricts the amount of people that can use the product, because fundamentally it's like you have to jump over that paywall to see anything, whereas, you know, Yelp has all of its content out there for free. So, you, you know, if you play that forward a, a number of years, as we have more and more content in all of the verticals and all of the geographies, you know, you, you have to ask the question, like, why, why would you want to pay when you can have it for free? <laughs> uh, gotcha. Any, uh, I, I think your IPO, uh, among other tech companies recently, you, you guys had one of the more successful ones. Any major lessons or takeaways from that whole experience? Um, you know, I think, as I look at it, it's really about stability. <laughs> stability with your business model, primarily. It's like you don't want to be uh, a public company and be you know, changing your jet engines in mid-flight. And uh, you know, sometimes you don't really have control over that. You, know, you kind of look at the, the Groupons and the Zingos, and there was huge shifts in their business very rapidly. And I think that's what Wall Street reacted to. They don't like that uncertainty. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they're not necessarily creative. They want to see the numbers, and they want the numbers to go up and to the right. And so as those numbers start to fluctuate, people get nervous and valuations uh, get affected. And so, you know, knock on leather, um, you know, we've, we've had quite smooth sailing. And so everything is kind of played forward as we were conveying to Wall Street, uh, you know, and, and as we figured would happen. And, uh, and you know, the, the company's done well. Awesome. Um, you guys have noted recently in your earnings reports that your mobile app performance is actually outpacing your desktop performance. Uh, any particular reason why that is? Is it, you know, what about the Yelp mobile experience makes the app more useful there? Yeah, in search we've seen some good performance. Um, and I think primarily what's going on there is like we, we do have a little bit more targeting information. So you think about doing a search on the web, you know, it's harder to articulate exactly where you are. So you might do, you know, restaurant in San Francisco and then we show you an ad for a restaurant. San Francisco, on mobile, you know, we now know exactly where we are. And so there may be an advertiser that is two blocks away, and so we can feed that information in when we're, we're choosing what ad to show you. And so I think that's a big part of what's going on there is the location targeting. Gotcha. Now, you were also talking to me before about, um, you guys have some pretty good mobile web traffic, and your mobile app traffic is, you know, kind of different as well. Can you, like, talk about the differences there and how people are approaching you guys through those platforms? Yeah, so we've got about 102 million uh, monthly uniques. About a quarter of that is, uh, is now on mobile. Uh, when it comes to mobile apps, we've got north of 10 million monthly actives. So that's not downloads, active users. Um, and those folks are super engaged. Um, and so as a result, we're now seeing from apps uh, something on the order of close to 50% of our search traffic is coming from uh, these app users. And so. And we really like that. We, we really like the growth trend, and we, and we like the engagement of the users. And what that represents is, you know, it's just a balancing of where we get our distribution. And um, you know, historically, we get a lot uh, of our traffic from SEO, uh, you know, free traffic through Google primarily. And on mobile, you know, the distribution has changed. Um, you know, we have a relationship with Apple, but then we also are obviously present, and popular in, in the App Store. Um, and users seem to, to really like the app and stick around. That's right. And uh, with Apple, you also have uh, your in Apple Maps as well. That's right. So that yeah. partnership is nice. Um, I've also noticed I've been using Android devices more frequently that Google's like, apps rankings um, tend to show up first or before Yelp stuff. Is that something you guys have noticed? Has that affected your mobile traffic at all? 
I mean, I think that's it's been the case for a while uh, that Google has tried to push its content forward. Uh, you know, in our vertical and then in, in a number of others. Uh, you know, something we've certainly raised uh, red flags about. Uh, you know, Congress. No hard feelings. Congress was interested in the space and, and called me up uh, to, to speak with them at, at one point. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've certainly registered our complaints. But reality is, you know, we have the best content, and, uh, and consumers are fighting their way uh, through obstacles to get to it. And so, you know, we continue to grow it and do well. So I can't can't complain that much. Gotcha. Are you, are you guys doing anything specifically to attract new users or to push people to your apps, or are you still just relying on the organic growth? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just about building a better and better product. Um, so coming up with new interesting things to do. We just launched a, a new nearby page, which has a pretty incredible uh, recommendation experience. So we kind of surface interesting things around you based on time of day, you know, your your previous behavior in the app, which you bookmarked, which you checked in, um, and that seems to be resonating with people. But then also, you know, just trying to launch things that make people's lives more convenient. So there you have the Yelp platform and being able to do food delivery um, right from your phone. So I think. You know, continuing to, to innovate, you, you can't really slow down. You can't just kind of rest on your laurels. You have to come up with new stuff to, to keep people happy. Gotcha. The, uh, the nearby feature is interesting, too, because it's one of those things where it's presenting information to you even before you really request it. You know, is that something you guys are looking at? The predictive capabilities of a lot of these mobile services, that seems more useful to many users, and you guys have a ton of great data to it. Reliant as well. Yeah, exactly. We have you know the best data out there, um, and so presenting that in, in a way that's even easier. Like, why if we if it's lunchtime, if it's 12 o'clock, and you're opening the app, guess what? You probably want lunch places. And so if we can be smart about it and say, oh, lunch places, and save you that step, like that's happiness for the user. And, and so you know, we're obviously going to try and do that. And then when we're choosing different places, like what information, what color can we layer on those choices that make it more interesting? Oh, you know, a particular friend, you know, happened to have. Uh, have dined there in a review and they really liked it. Like that, that might be interesting. To you. Uh, or you know, this place just opened up. Like that's actually one of the one of the most popular signals. Um, is just new hot places yeah. that, that are around you that you didn't even know existed. Gotcha. Uh, you guys, uh, I also know like you're focusing a little more on international expansion this year. Can you talk about like how Yelp is doing that and yeah, what goes into that? Yeah. So we we've been executing the, the Yelp playbook, which has been working um, in Europe primarily. It's been most of our expansion. And then late last year, Q4, we bought Quipe, which was uh, the most Yelp-like site in Europe, certainly the largest. Um, and we've been incorporating their content uh, into Yelp. So bringing, you know, they had millions of reviews, and we're bringing those reviews onto the Yelp platform and redirecting the URLs so the, the Quipe site ceases to exist over time, okay. and all the content uh, and users move to Yelp. Uh, and so thus far, we've done Ireland and Italy and Spain. And so those have, have gone well. Uh, and so we're going to continue merging in uh, additional countries through the rest of the year, hopefully to be done with, with the entire merger by the end of the year. Cool. Um, so that's very exciting. I mean, it's north of 15 million uniques come to, to Quipe every month uh, and millions of reviews. So I think it's going to move the needle for us here. Gotcha. Um, we have a couple minutes left. So does anybody have questions for Jeremy? You can get the mics over to you. Uh, in the back. Yep. Um, hello. Um, earlier you said you were speaking about Google and Facebook and you were talking about how difficult it is to focus on multiple initiatives. Um, and obviously gathering as much data, getting as many reviews is really important to you guys. So how do you, how do you balance the focus between getting as much data as possible and then also trying to invest in quality of that content so it's not just a bunch of reviews that aren't really relevant for people. Sure. The, the quality content comes from people that are passionate and really are, are writing for the love of writing. Um, and where virtually, we've seen virtually all of our competitors get it wrong is they get focused on the business. And they say, well, we really need reviews in you know home services category. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Well, we'll give away Frisbees at street fairs if people write reviews. <laughs> In home services, right? You know, three three home services reviews, you get a frisbee, and so you get your Home Depot review and, and whatnot. And it's not uh, it's not a great way to, to build uh, really high quality content. So we've never taken that approach of directing our users to anything. What we, what we from a, the very beginning said was review writing has to be fun. 
It has to be something that people want to do as a hobby because they love it, and they're meeting other people that are just you know, like-minded, and they're exchanging information, and they love you know the, the joy of writing and, and so forth. And so we literally have, have built in you know tons of cities now, north of 100 cities, communities. We have a community manager on the ground. There's actual real-life meetups that happen every four to six weeks. Uh, it's a huge effort and, and frankly, expense uh, that we put into fostering and growing these communities now all over the world. And it's something that, you know, there's been surface level uh, attempts to, to copy, but I think fundamentally it's, it's not obvious um, and, and it's something that a lot of these uh, other folks just get wrong. And partially it's also because of the rush to build a competitive product. It's like, well, you don't want to wait nine years <laughs> to, to allow these communities to, to grow organically. You want to get it done overnight because that leads you to make, you know, poor short-term decisions.